Hello and welcome students to another episode of History at Home. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the first societies to begin forming on this planet. Those are known as hunter-gatherer communities. Like always, let's start with a quick review of what we've discussed over the last few class periods. We know our fossil records indicate that humans burst onto the scene around 195,000 years ago. And based on where we found these fossils um, in modern day Ethiopia, we think this little pocket here is kind of where humans first appeared on this planet. Homo 1 is the name given to the earliest Homo sapien that we have right now on record. And it took us about 100,000 years uh, for humans to first walk out of Africa. Um, and humans did not reach the Western Hemisphere, our side of the world, until about 14,000 years ago. This is all part of the out of Africa theory. So humans from this modern day kind of location of Ethiopia walked up the coast on either side of the Nile River, crossed across the Sinai Peninsula and into the continents of Europe, into Asia, eventually from there into Australia, and then only around 14,000 years ago into um, the North America and South America. So when we talk about kind of hunter-gatherer groups, it's nice to make a list of what humans need for survival. And when you jot these down, you might develop a longer list than you originally anticipated. So some essentials that humans need for survival, we obviously need food, uh, we need water. Those are two of the most basic and uh, most important essentials for our survival. Because food and water are so basic for our survival, um, even today throughout the world, humans tend to live very close to the coastline uh, because there's abundance of water and you can find fish um, as a food source throughout the seas and oceans. We need sunlight to keep us warm, oxygen to breathe, companionship um, to keep us company and to help us out. We need tools to make our lives easier. We need shelter to protect us from the elements. We need a moderate temperature, nothing too extremely cold or too extremely hot for survival. We need to sleep about eight hours or so every day. Um, fire to keep us safe at night from predators, to keep us warm at night, to allow us to see in darker places. But with this episode on hunters and gatherers, we're going to focus on food, um, what our ancient ancestors ate, and also how did they protect themselves from the elements. So if we plotted out human existence so far with our studies, we know humans first appeared around 195 BCE in Africa. And from there, it took us about 115,000 years to develop something like artwork. This is a picture of the first um, Examples of artwork that we have, it was once a necklace, so you can see a little drill hole here, um, and some basic lines across the face of this pendant, uh, which used to be part of the necklace. So nothing too brilliant or extravagant, but this is at the moment the earliest examples of art that archeologists have found. From there, about 28,000 years, um, from artwork to fishing in the deep seas uh, and oceans, this is a fish hook made out of a seashell that was found in Japan. Uh, we talked about this only around four or 12,000 years ago, 14,000 BCE, humans first made it to the Western Hemisphere and reached the Americas. And only around 10,000 BCE did we begin to farm. These first four items um, between this time period and over here to around 10,000 BCE is something known as the Paleolithic Age. And the Paleolithic Age lasts from about 2.6 million years ago all the way up to the discovery of agriculture around 10,000 BCE. Once we discover agriculture, um, historians classify that as such a giant breakthrough in our existence that we kind of end the Paleolithic Age as a time period and start up a new time period that historians call the Neolithic Age. So what was life like for our early human ancestors? Let's look at their lifestyle first. During the Paleolithic Age, which again is about 2.6 million years ago to 10,000 BCE, all humans were hunter-gatherers and nomadic. A hunter-gatherer is a person who gets their food from either hunting animals or gathering plant life and dead animals. Uh, because of this, they need to be a nomad or nomadic. A nomad is a person who lacks a permanent home. Um, and I raise this question to you. It's a very simple one. Why do hum or hunter gatherers need to be nomadic? Uh, the answer to that is quite simple. Humans needed to be nomadic during this time period because they needed to follow the food source. They needed to follow animals that were migrating they needed to move based on the seasons as well. So humans that were hunters and gatherers have to be nomadic because they need to follow food as it migrates throughout the world uh, based on the seasons. 
Uh, one thing that separates us from our hunter-gatherer past is the ways in which we secure food. So hunter-gatherers had to hunt their food, and modern, quote, civilized man today can also hunt their food. Hunter-gatherers of the distant past used to gather, forage, or scavenge for their food. And even today, we can still do this if we need to. But one thing that certainly separates us from our distant ancient um, hunter-gatherer ancestors is the fact that we can grow food. Hunter-gatherers did not have the ability to grow food. They couldn't conceptualize um, the patterns of taking seeds, planting them into the ground, watering them, coming back a few months later and finding a food source. Hunter-gatherers could not grow food, and that is something that certainly separates us today from our past. Um, as far as hunting, one of these ways in which they got food, men pretty much did all of the hunting while women did the gathering. Uh, what did men hunt? Typically and primarily, it was actually fishing because it's safer to do than hunting big game animals. And because fish are so abundant in the sea, it's a low effort way of hunting. You can simply throw a line into the water and wait until something nibbles or bites it. On land, we would hunt things like reindeer, mammoths, rabbits, and horses. Uh, women would gather things like wild fruits and veggies, edible grasses and roots. They would scavenge through birds' nests looking for eggs as well. Um, and since food could be scarce, hunter-gatherer groups tend to max out at around 30 people. Anything more than that, and it's just too hard to find an abundance of food for everyone. As far as shelter and housing, um, hunter and gatherers, again, are nomadic, and they lack a permanent house. Um, but what they would do is build semi-permanent housing. They would build huts and tents um, or live in natural dwellings like caves. This is a half-dome tent, something that could be as, assembled in as quickly as an hour or two. So it's portable. Hunter and gatherer groups could pick that up, move it with them as they followed animals. Um, and then when they had an abundance of food, they could set up camp for upwards of a couple months. Um, and they would also revisit sites annually based on how much food they found there in the previous year. So we would see them kind of visit the same spot many, many different times throughout their lives and usually more than once in a given year. Uh, one thing that's really interesting to note about hunter-gatherers is what they did for leisure. Studies show that hunter-gatherers on average worked about 6.5 hours a day. Once they secured their food and made tools and sharpened items and stuff like that, they would have kind of the rest of the day to do as they, they wanted. Uh, modern humans today have only about eight point or work about 8.5 hours per day. So our ancient ancestors that were hunters and gatherers worked on average about two hours less per day um, than we do. Uh, during these extra hours of leisure, they would spend time telling stories, creating art, playing musical instruments. So here's an example of some artwork they created in uh, France. Um, here are some flutes that they would make as well. They would sculpt, they would create tools and weapons like these little tiny spears and arrows, and they would study the nighttime sky so they knew when to move. Uh, technology, what would they make and, and use to make their lives easier? Uh, typically, they would look for things around them like stones, fire, rope, and tools, um, things that they could replicate easily. Those were the most common tools. They would use a hand drill like you see here to help them replicate and create fire. And weapons of this time period are things like the spear, the hand axe, which you see pictured here, uh, and a bow and arrow. Also, men and women had what we call today a division of labor. So men did a little bit of the work. Women did work as well. Um, and because of this, hunter-gatherer groups tend to be what we call egalitarian. This means that men and women had an equal status in their society. Men or women were not better than one another. They tended to be equal within their society. Men's again, men, again, were the hunters. Uh, women tended to be the gatherers. Uh, and one of the big responsibilities men would have outside of hunting is making tools. Uh, and sharpening tools to make their lives easier. Women made clothes, they created and maintained fires as well, and they raised and cared for kids. So just a quick summary. The first human communities were hunter-gatherer communities. Um, they also had a division of labor. Men and women had different jobs, but the community tended to be egalitarian, so everyone within that society had equal status. And keep in mind as well, we have these two big time periods, the Paleolithic Age, which lasted between 2.6 million years ago, all the way up to the discovery of agriculture at 10,000 BCE. And soon we'll be talking about the Neolithic Ages uh, and the developments of the Neolithic Age between 10,000 BCE and 2000 BCE. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.